just a, a, a little bit of theory today in that we're going to look at a couple of alternative ways of doing the same question. So, and I'm just going back to the question we looked at yesterday. Sketch the parabola y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. Quicker way of doing things. Now, the first technique we know is a technique completing the square. What I could do with this is complete the square on it. So I know it would factorise to be x plus 4 all squared, half the coefficient of x. But of course, x plus 4 all squared doesn't give me 12. It gives me 16. So I subtract 4. When it's in that form, I can then think of it like our shifting idea that we looked at. And so I can find the coordinates of the vertex very quickly now that it's, I've got something grouped with the x and so on. I can look at that and say, oh, hang on. I know the vertex is minus 4, minus 4. So having it in that form can find the vertex, as I say, quite quickly. If I wanted to find the x-intercepts, well, again, if it's in the completing the square form, I can now say, well, that has to equal 0. So x plus 4 squared is 4, which means x plus 4 is plus or minus 2. And so I could get my answers uh, that way. We'll get negative 4 plus or minus 2. There's our negative 6 or our negative 2. Now, the question where we had write down the quadratic with roots 2 and 8 and vertex 5, 3. I could do that question, again, by using completing the square. If its vertex is 5, 3, then I know it must be x minus 5 or squared plus 3. Times some constant, but this is where we've got to be careful. We only times the uh, square part by k. I don't times the 3 by the k. Because if I multiply the 3 by the k as well, that's going to affect how far up or down we end up moving it. And we know we only want to move the vertex up 3. I mean, that's known. Right. Substituting in, well, any point really. I, I could choose 2 naught or I could use 8 naught. I've, I've used 2 naught. Substitute that in and I can work out k is negative a third. And so there is the equation in completing the square form. So I could solve the question that way. And if I want the whole quadrant, well, I'll just expand out and uh, then we get our answer. Another way of doing it is I could use the discriminant to find these features. Okay. Our discriminant is that bit under the square root sign in the quadratic formula. So b squared minus 4ac. has other uses, which we'll see later on. But the vertex will always have coordinates. Minus b on 2a axis of symmetry. But the y value will always be minus the discriminant on 4a. That will always be the y value. Okay. The zeros, well, basically, that's just the quadratic formula, of course. But instead of writing plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, I've just written plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. I mean, that's no great revelation for that part. It tells me a bit, because if the zeros or the x-intercepts are this, then... To work out whether it has x-intercepts, I don't have to solve the whole quadratic. I just look at that discriminant. So now, if it's a negative number, well, I can't find the square root of a negative number, so there's no solutions, therefore no x-intercepts. If it was equal to zero, then it must only have one x-intercept, so it's a parabola that just touches the x-axis. And if it's greater than zero, then I know it's going to have two answers, so it will cut through and have two. So that's, that's a quick way of looking at it rather than solving the whole thing. I mean, just look at that b squared minus 4ac to find out that piece of information. All right, back to yesterday's question. Sketch the parabola y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. Well, the discriminant for this one turns out to be 16. So the vertex now, I can just go, OK, minus b on 2a minus the discriminant on 4a. And so there's our vertex, minus 4, minus 4. <laughs> oh, the other reason that's useful, though, by the way, the minus discriminant on 4a, but if we do have a question where it says, what is the maximum value or the minimum value, I don't need to work out the axis of symmetry there. I can just go, ah, well, minus the discriminant on 4a, and that'll give me that maximum value or that minimum value straight away. Okay, so that certainly has an advantage in, in that regards. 
Okay. So 8B, which I believe is on the uh, completing the square idea, and 8C using the, the 